Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I am now going to be answering question number two from the Solomon IP3 um, collection. Okay, um, actually it's the C3 Solomon collection, but I called it P3 now because the, the paper's names have changed. And it's also question number 11 from my P3 worksheet, end of topic worksheet number five about exponentials and logarithms. Okay. So I was requested by one of my students to answer the part B of this question. I'll just go through the whole thing. Now, part question number two, you're given these two sketches of these graphs, y equals e to the power of x plus 2, and y equals 3 plus 2 e to the power of x. And we're told that they crossed the y-axis at a and b. Okay, so you can see that this graph crosses at a and this one at b respectively then it says find the exact length a b so we have to basically find the y intercepts of each of these graphs so we have y equals e to the power of x plus 2 i'll just do my steps over here because I'll see what's happening so we've got y equals e to the power of x plus 2 now for the point b okay we can see that that's going to be when x equals 0 something hits the y axis when x is 0 so that's when y is equal to e to the power of 0 plus 2 is y equals e squared. So the coordinates of the point B are 0 and e squared. And the coordinates for the point A, now A is where this graph hits the y-axis, and the equation of the graph is y equals 3 plus 2 e to the power of x. So when x is 0 in this case, y is going to be 3 plus 2 e to the power of 0. e to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so y is equal to 5. So this is the point 0, 5. So I need to find the distance AB, which is basically the difference between the Y coordinates of these two points. So it's pretty simple. So we know that A is a point 0, E squared, and B is a point 0, 5. So therefore, the length AB is going to be E squared minus 5. They want the exact length, so we leave it in this form. We don't write, uh, you know, we don't write the decimal equivalent of this. We leave it in the form of e squared minus 5. And there we have our answer, okay? Because we know that this is b is e squared and a is 5. So e squared minus 5 will give you that length. Okay, then it says the two curves intersect at the point c. As we can see here, they intersect at this point over here. And it tells us to find an expression for the x-coordinate of c and show the y coordinate of c is 3 e squared over e squared minus 2. Okay, so we need to know where they intersect. So we have to solve these two equations simultaneously. So we have, as we said, y equals e, y equals e to the power of x plus 2. And we also have y equals 3 plus 2 e to the power of x. Just make sure that I wrote those correct. 3 plus 2 e to the power of x, yes. Okay, so we have to solve these two equations simultaneously. So we can substitute in one of the equations instead of y, e to the power of x plus 2. So if we solve these simultaneously, we will get e to the power of x plus 2 is equal to 3 plus 2 e to the power of x. So if I bring everything on one side, first of all, this is actually the same as saying e to the power of x times e to the power of 2. It's like that's the origin of this. Okay, if you think about the origin of e to the power of x plus 2, you would have e to the power of x times e to the power of 2, then you would add the two powers together. So I'm kind of splitting it up here and I'm doing that for a reason because I want to bring the e to the power of x's together on one side. Okay, because I want to find what x is. So I have to bring the x terms together. So I'm going to also take away 2 e to the power of x from both sides and I'll, I'll be left with this. I can see e to the power of x is a factor of both of these terms. So I can say e to the power of x and this is e squared minus 2 equals 3. So I can say e to the power of x is equal to 3 over e squared minus 2. So I want to find an expression for the x-coordinate of c. This is in terms of e to the power of x. Now, if I take the lin of both sides, if I take the lin of this side, I'll be left with x, okay? because you've got lin e to the power of x. Using the power law, lin of e is 0 is 1, because the lin of e means log to the base e of e gives you 1. So you've got x equals, and you've got lin, and of all of this, 3 over e squared minus 2. So there we have the answer to part, uh, the first part of part b. 
It says, find an expression for the x coordinate of c. So we've done that part. Okay, so that's part of the answer. That's an expression for the x coordinate of c. Now we've got to find the y coordinate or show that the y coordinate of c is this. Okay, so now, in this type of question, there's different ways you can do it. Um, now, I personally would, you, I wouldn't use this x value. I would think about some sort of substitution. Okay, and if you can spot it, it's, it's all well and good. So you have y equals e to the power of x plus 2, and y equals 3 plus 2 e to the power of x. Now, I could use either of these, but if I take this and use it in the form that we saw before, e to the power of x times e to the power of 2. So if I know I've got an expression for e to the power of x here, you see? So I could replace the e to the power of x with 3 over e squared minus 2. So then I'll get something of this form, you see? So if I replace the x, the, the e to the power of x, I know e to the power of x is equal to, as we saw there, 3 over e squared minus 2. So if I, if I replace the e to the power of x with that, I'm going to get 3 over e squared minus 2 times e squared, which will give me 3 e squared over e squared minus 2. And I've shown what we're asked to show. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Um, another way would be to use this expression, and it should also work. So if I use this expression, so we finish basically, that's the answer. We've shown how y equals that by just using a substitution which is simple. Okay, which is just spotting that there's an e to the power of x equals something, and you can substitute that into this equation. You could also have done it by using the, the second equation for y, because they should give you the same point, of course. So you've got 3 plus 2 times, instead of e to the power of x, again I can write... 3 over e squared minus 2. So that's 3 plus 6 over e squared minus 2. Now, if I make this into one fraction, I'll have the common denominator of e squared minus 2. Of course, the first way I did it is easier, but I'm just showing you it'll work in both ways. Um, e squared minus 2 is a common denominator. So this will be 3 times e squared minus 2 plus 6, which will give you 3 times e squared minus 2 minus 6, sorry. Because 3 times minus 2 is, is minus 6, plus 6 over e squared minus 2, which, let me just make some more space here, which we can see is going to give us exactly what's required, 3 e squared over e squared minus 2. So this is, um, of course, a bit longer. I'm, I think this is easier to do, use, the, use this equation because you can rewrite it like that. It makes life easier. But even if you use a second equation, you still come out with the same y coordinate, and that's well and good. Now, some people might not have spotted that e to the power of x um, equals 3e squared minus 2, and they might have basically, um, you know, maybe have substituted uh, lin 3 over e squared minus 2 into here. Um, um, they might have done something like that. I don't know what they would have done in this case. They might have, uh, you know, used this in this equation. So, for example, they might have put 3 plus 2 e to the power of 3 over... So, they might have done this. Okay, just, just to see. Some of you might have done this. I just want to just show how it still would work, but it's just a bit more long-winded. And if you can look, look for easy substitution, it makes life easier. So, this is another way that some people might have done it. Say they would have taken this equation, y equals 3 plus 2 e to the power of x. And they substitute instead of x... What we found x to be, which is lin e over lin of 3 over e squared minus 2. So they say y equals 3 plus 2 e to the power of lin. And you got 3 e over e squared minus 2. Now, e to the power of lin of something will give you that thing. Because these are, these are like um, inverse functions. So if you have the inverse function with the original function conjugate, it gives you what's ever in the bracket. So here, what you're going to end up with is basically 3 plus 2 times 3e over e squared minus 2, which is the same as what we got there. Okay, it's exactly the same as what we got here when we, when we got this thing. 3 plus 2 times 3 over e squared minus 2. So it'll still give you the same thing. You have to just go through this little, uh, you know, bit of bother here. But as long as you know that e, the e to the power of x function is the inverse of the lin function, so if you put one inside the other, they cancel each other out. So you'll be left with just what's inside the bracket. So here you'll be left with whatever's over here. They'll cancel each other out and you've got 3e e squared um, e squared minus 2. Okay? 
3 over e squared minus 2, and then it continues to give you the same answer. So there's three different kind of ways to do this. Okay, I think this first way was the easiest way. And there is the end of this question. I hope that was clear. And um, if you would like to see more questions about um, exponential logarithms from P3, you can click on the link over here. If you'd like to see more questions from this particular Solomon I paper as I answer them, they'll be clicked in the playlist, which you can link from this this area over here. You can subscribe to the channel from this icon, and I'll put a card up here, which will take you to some other P3 type of past paper or something. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.